to me, there is not one way to do everything. There, there may be, a, you know, a bunch of different ways, but you can take a bunch of different routes to get to the same solution. My favorite route is the most efficient route. Um, and, you know, at times that changes depending on what platforms come out, um, what new updates for those platforms roll out. So um, making sure that you stay on top of it and you know everything that's accessible and all the resources that you have available to you, you can figure out the best route to take and the most efficient route to take. Welcome to Show Me The Nuggets, where each week, Joe chats with world-class entrepreneurs to find out the key principles, strategies, and processes that lie behind their outstanding achievements. Now, your host, the no-bullshit serial entrepreneur, Joe Troyer. Hey, everybody. It's Joe Troyer, and welcome to Show Me The Nuggets. Today, we have on Janelle Henderson our very own COO here at Invisible PPC. Super excited to have Janelle on. We're gonna bring her on in just a moment. Uh, but before that, I wanna give you a glimpse uh, of today's show. So we're going with the working title of finding and optimizing your seven-figure agency uh, with an integrator. And I'm super excited because at like every event that I show up with Janelle at, everybody's always asking like, how'd you find Janelle? Or, or what's Janelle like working with in the business? And I think that a lot of people are after, um, you know, an integrator in their agency. And so I wanted to have kind of a behind the scenes conversation with Janelle about what we've learned, what she's learned, and uh, really get in depth on her role as an integrator here at our agency at Invisible PPC. So without further ado, Janelle, welcome officially to the show. Hey guys. So Janelle, yeah. uh, excited to have you. Um, this kind of happened just spur of the moment as we were ending one of our marketing meetings. I was like, Janelle, we need to get you on the podcast. Uh, and so I'm excited because like I said in the intro, I feel like so often uh, people ask, how did you find Janelle? What's it like working with an integrator? And a lot of people, whether they're just getting started or even in the seven figures, haven't really felt the benefits of having an integrator on the team. And I want to get into what that means and what we think that means. But first, um, Janelle, do us a favor and give us a little intro on kind of your background. And um, then we'll talk about how you ended up at Invisible PPC. So I graduated from UF, hence theater in the background, um, with my degree in psych. And from there, I actually became a counselor. After being a counselor for children for a little bit, I decided that just, you know, it's not for me. Um, more than likely, I was going to kill one of the parents. So I was like, I'm just this. Um, so then I went into insurance on the marketing side um, and was there for a few years, uh, took over all of the all state agents in the state of Florida. At the time, there were 324. So it was quite a large portfolio, but managed to um, go through it and maximize and make them successful. Um, then went over to promotional marketing, which, you know, cups, pens, koozies, anything that you want your logo on, I was able to do for you, um, supplying all of the promotional material needed from email blasts to campaigns to anything that you can think of um, marketing related. After doing that for a while, I... I wanted something different. I, I needed more stimulation, even though like there was endless stimulation. I just wanted something different. So I came across Invisible PPC and looked into it and it just, it sounded so exciting, so versatile. It's just something new that I could really just sink my teeth into. And let me tell you, I'm never bored. <laughs> hey, hey, real quick, before we dive into the rest of this episode, real, real quick, I promise my team and I would like to personally thank you, our audience, yes, you listening right now, for all the amazing support that you guys have been giving the podcast. The growth has been just crazy, and I want you to know that we're super, super appreciative to you. So we've been trying to think of something cool that we could do to give back to our audience, to give back to you guys. Uh, and I think we've come up with something that's really, really unique. It's something that's special. So here's the thing. Uh, the team here at Digital Triggers, my own little team here, uh, has decided that we're going to give away a gift uh, that includes our top of the line resources to sell 
SEO, right? And we know that so many of you guys out there are agencies. This is going to literally give you uh, contracts, proposals, uh, pitches, uh, uh, scripts that you guys can use, outreach templates. It's a pack of assets and collateral for anybody wanting to sell SEO services or marketing services to any type of business, not just local businesses. This has been used to, to land uh, e-com deals, all kinds of deals out there. So if you didn't hear that, let me make it a little more clear. Okay, our Digital Triggers family is giving you some of the best of the best of the, the content and the resources that we've ever put together absolutely free just for listening to the podcast, okay? All that you have to do is go to digitaltriggers.io slash gift pack and you are good to go. Folks, it is that simple. We'll make sure that this page is up and ready for you guys by the time this episode airs. And with that being said, let's get back to the episode. All right. That was all right. I think, I think that went okay. Say, how would you say um, you stumbled acro uh, across us or why would you say you stumbled across us? What was, what was it that you were looking for? What were you drawn uh, away from and what were you looking towards as, as you saw the ad for Invisible? Like you said, it was interesting. You said that you're never busy or you're never, uh, you never have not enough to do. Like you're always busy. Talk a little bit more about that. What does that mean? It came time where I was, where it was just kind of like monotonous, where it was the same thing over and over and over. Um, and, you know, looking at Invisible, there are so many different opportunities um, from, you know, building the campaigns with PPC marketing to, you know, omni targeting to then also, you know, we have different launches and products that we sell outside of, like outside of actually fulfillment, like our courses. It, it, it's not just... Um, one kind of product for everyone. It's a bunch of yeah. different products to really sink your teeth in. And I, I really love the meat and potatoes of it and the ability to have a different day every day, I guess you could say. Um, so when I came across Invisible PPC actually on LinkedIn, I was going through my newsfeed and it, it, ju it just came up on my newsfeed. I was like, oh, you know, this looks interesting. So then I started re researching Invisible PPC and I was like, I want to be on that team. Like, how, how did you get on that team? Uh, and then that's when I came um, into contact with Susan. And then she introduced me to Joe and Rob. And it was fate. <laughs> it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. So you said a couple things there that I want to draw out and really, and really highlight. To some degree, uh, in, in you, what you were working on previously, there was a ceiling, right? Where you were kind of bored right? It was kind of the same thing day in and day out. And then you made the comment that I had a different every day. And so I think that you saw you, you had a ceiling and you saw that invisible PPC could give you that different every day, I think is important. But I think that um, when you're hiring somebody that there's two types of people, there's people like you, Janelle, that want that different every day, and that take on that excitement and like we call you the octopus, right? Where you just like have a million hands. You're just, you know, we're throwing you things. And you're like, yeah, we got it, you know, yeah. got it. And there's people that hate that, right? Mm -hmm. And that like, that would drive them nuts. And, and I'm one of those people, right? Like that drives me nuts. I can't handle it. Um, I have enough ADD as it is. I don't need any help. Um, so I need somebody like you to help me rein it in and, and get those things taken care of. So I think it's important if you're going to look at hiring, no matter what the position is, um, that you really think about what, what the role requires. Is it somebody that is constantly innovating on new projects and new processes and new systems? Or is it kind of more of the same all the time? And once they kind of have it conquered, it's just living in that day to day. Um, and I think you're right that, that you got to make sure you find the right fit there. Oh, for sure. Um, I love living in an ever-changing environment. Um, to me, there is not one way to do everything there there may be a, you know a bunch of different ways but you can take a bunch of different routes to get to the same solution my favorite route is the most efficient route um and you know at times that changes depending on what platforms come out um what new updates for those platforms roll out so um making sure that you stay on top of it and you know everything that's accessible and all the resources that you have available to you you can figure out the best route to take and the most efficient route to take. But I love living in an ever-changing environment. And that's what I get when I'm in Invisible PPC, which is great. So this was quite the learning curve for you too. 
And what I mean by that is you're not from the agency world, right? Like you're not used to all the vernacular and all the, pro all, all the software that we use as marketers and agencies. And so you had to go through quite a brutal, I feel like onboarding and, and getting up to speed process. Um, what do you think was the, the hardest learning curve coming into the business? I think would be an interesting question because I feel like so many agencies, we've been in this space for so long, we kind of take it for granted, right? It's just, it's normal everyday life. I would say the hardest learning curve for me was probably actually learning PPC itself. Um, Cause you know, processes, platforms, to me that just comes very, very naturally. I'm extremely intuitive when it comes to that, but actually sitting down and processing PPC and just realizing just how intense it is just to get an account set up. It takes hours of work um, and that diligence and that follow through and attention to detail. Um, that was, you know, a, a huge learning curve, but um, once you learn the intricate, it, it doesn't necessarily change unless, you know, Google decides to change their rules, um, which is always fun. Uh, but um, that was probably the biggest learning curve. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha, definitely. The, um, there's, there's a lot of detail, that's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so can you walk us through high level, Janelle, your role um, and your function uh, being the COO at Invisible PPC? Like, what does an average day look like? What's the team structure kind of look like high level? On an average day to day, I do a huge bulk of my meetings starting off in the morning, just because we have our team all over the world in different time zones um, from, you know, the UK to Australia to the Philippines, um, and of course, you know, all over the US too. So I, I try to bulk as much as I can in the morning because that's usually when everyone's time zones overlap. So that's the morning is usually you'll just I mean like back to back meetings. Um, but after that, that's when you know I start working on projects and making sure that all the projects that we have going on throughout the company are being accounted for, um, that they're moving forward. And then as far as internal setup, so we have quite a few different departments in, in Invisible PPC. So we have our accounting team, um, which, you know, of course does collection to make sure that the lights stay on. Uh, and then we have our design team who, who generates all of our landing pages, all of our ads, all of our, you know, marketing materials, uh, our sales team, which of course, you know, try, tries to bring in everything that they can. And then our fulfillment team, which fulfills for what's brought in. Um, and so in our fulfillment team, it, it, we have uh, client facing account directors who manage the relationships with our agencies, who gain our ag agencies trust and make sure that we're operating as an extension of their agency. So they have that across the desk field that they make sure they make sure that they get the best human experience possible as we're fulfilling for them, because, you know, it is a little it is a little scary taking part of your business and, you know, putting it in someone else's hands and, and really hoping that they're, they're successful with it. So that way you don't lose that income. So that, you know, that's a little scary to have that trust there. And, you know, our account directors do a great job of establishing that trust and making sure that the agency has all of the resources that they need. So when the agency goes and talks to the end client, they know exactly what they're talking about and they're able to give that knowledge to the end client. Um, we also have our account managers who are in the back end constantly monitoring the accounts, making sure that they're not going over budget, making sure that the ads are running smoothly as they're scheduled to. So, and then we have, um, of course, our customer support team who answers, you know, any question, any miscellaneous questions that come in that aren't necessarily account specific, because um, of course those all go to the account directors. But, um, you know, for example, if they have questions on our different courses or if they have, you know, questions on, you know, their billing or so, so on and so forth, our account or um, customer support analysts are able to help with those. Perfect. So Invisible PPC runs a all virtual team. How's that compare to, um, or, and contrast to what you've been involved with in the past? You know, it's funny, you would think that running a virtual team, you wouldn't be as in touch or connected to those people that you work with. That is a myth. That is not the case. <laughs> I feel as sometimes I talk to a lot of the people on our team way more than I talk to my friends ever. Uh, <laughs> um, so it really, I, I talk to them every day and it, there it hasn't been any sort of, um, 
communication disarray. Like every so often the internet or go out in a certain area. Um, but we have a bunch of processes in place to compensate for that and make up for, you know, when we do have like shortcomings when it comes to things we can't control, like active gods, like storms or internet going out. Um, so, you know, we utilize Slack a lot for our communication. And if ever anyone is going to be out of touch for a little bit, they immediately report it on our Slack channel. So that way they're accounted for and we know where they are because in an office, you can easily look over your computer and say, oh, you know, Ryan, Ryan's not in, you know, he's sick or something. But when he's away in the Philippines, it's kind of hard to check on how he's doing. But um, our team is really diligent about checking in and making sure that we know where they are, what they're working on, um, asking questions as they need to, and not only holding themselves accountable, but holding each other accountable, too. Definitely. That's great. I think that obviously being virtual, there's definitely some drawbacks, right? That we have to manage, we have to deal with, we have to live with. Um, what do you think are the main challenges or drawbacks? You obviously said communication, right? Communication's a little more difficult. We got to make sure that we're extra on top of communication because we don't see, uh, you know, how, how somebody's looking throughout the day and, and what their mojo's like, you know, are they in a great mood? Are they in a bad mood? There's a little more reading between the lines. What, what would you say is the other things that are a little more difficult to keep tabs on, right? As, as a COO running the company when it's virtual. One of the things I like to make sure I always have, cause something really difficult to keep tabs on is uh, body language. So when people don't have their cameras on, you can't really get a read of how they're doing as an individual. Um, you know, if you were working in an office, you could say, oh, you know, Heather is having a rough day today because, you know, something happened at school or, um, you know, something happened with Brittany, um, because you're able to see and read that energy of the person that's directly in front of you. As when you're remotely and people have their cameras off, you, you can't get a read for their body language. You can't really get a read if they're being, you know, honest or just, you know, making up bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one of the other things that I think I've found most difficult is culture when you run a virtual company. So everybody can tell already you're very bubbly, smiley, you know, happy, and it's contagious, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's hard not to be that way talking with you. Uh, but if you run a company and you aren't Janelle, right, and you are bubbly and happy, um, it can be hard to keep everybody um, happy and that culture going and fun and inviting. Um, what do you think are some things that we've done that have worked to, to manage and to keep a team virtual happy, right? And to keep that day-to-day -day satisfaction level high, right? Um, I, I think, you know, you've done a really good job of that and it hasn't always been that way. So we have quite a few different things set up um, to establish a culture and sort of rhythm and cadence within the business. We have our daily huddles established, which all of our team reports on their accomplishments and successes throughout the day, things that they've had challenges with, um, things that they want to celebrate. And there's also an area for them to share. It's called open mic. So they can share whatever they want. And, you know, that really puts a lot of conversations on the table and starts a lot of conversations amongst the team. And you're able to track trends that way too. We also have a TGIF every Friday and the entire company attends that meeting. And so that's where we have all of our company updates. We, we tell them whether we're on target, off tar target, what's, what's new on our plate. Um, so we have that established from, you know, daily to weekly as well. We have a bunch of, um, morale boosters, I guess you can say, um, from, you know, when it's someone's birthday to when it's their anniversary, how long they've been with the company. And then, of course, we always have rewards, too. We have our accolades channel in our Slack where we give each other pats on the back and even ourselves pats on the back whenever we've done a good job. And all of those are celebrated on a weekly basis during our TGF call. At the end of each month, we have an accolade winner for the, the person who got the most accolades throughout the month. So they're celebrated for all of the good that they did and the impact that they had on the team. Um, I think having an open door policy also helps quite a bit. Um, you know, whenever there's issues or questions, no one ever hesitates to come and ask and get clarification, um, you know, on anything that they have in mind. So having that open door policy and being open and communicating with your team on a daily basis, I think that really helps establish uh, our culture and us all being on the same page, working towards the same goal. 
Definitely. And I think it's not just open door, but I think you've done a really good job of making it known that you accept feedback, right? And I don't have to be right. Like you're not obsessed with being right. It's about let's get the right outcome, right? And right. If, if we're doing something wrong, tell me we're doing it wrong. If there's a better way, you, you think that there might be a better way, come, come talk, like let's, let's figure it out. Oh, I think, uh, you know, many more brains are better than one brain. So if ever I do something and you have feedback on it and you, you know, there's a better way to do it. Like I said before, there's a bunch of different paths to get to the same solution. If you, you know, ultimately you're trying to reach a goal that, you know, and you have one path mapped out for that goal, that doesn't mean it's the best path. And someone may look at your map and be like, you know what, there's a more direct route. Let me show you. Bio means show me. I want the shortest route. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So right now we have a team of roughly 30 plus people, um, Mm -hmm. depending on where the, when this airs, there may be more, Um, but (laughs) hiring to us and onboarding has become really, really important, obviously, um, as we need the ability to scale up quickly. What do you think are kind of the keys to us being able to find the right people and put them in the right seats, so to speak? So, um, I would say starting out with a very uh, detailed outline as to exactly what you're wanting the position to be, what their KPRs are, what their goals are, what you're measuring them on. So you have a clear visual of what you want fulfilled in that role. From there, qualifying the candidates through different questions and making sure that as they come down the pipeline, they are qualified. They do meet the metrics that you're trying to measure. Or, you know, they do have the skills and experience that you're looking for. And then as they come down the pipeline, then when you have your one-on-one interviews with them, vetting them out to make sure that not only would they do a phenomenal job, but they will also fit within the company and help, you know, contribute to the growing culture that we have. So having it outlined for each role that you have, um, each position within the department, and then a set, a set list of qualifying questions. So you can weed out those and save time and weed out those that, you know, you really, really want to spend your energy on. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, we have weeks where we've onboarded two or three or even four people, I think in a single week. And I think from the outside, if somebody hadn't done that before, right. I I know looking at that would be like, holy crap, like seriously, like how's that even possible? Um, So I think, yeah, the tips that you gave were were really good there. But also after onboarding, I wanted to add, if you have, I like to have first 30 days of each of these training already set up, you know, from what they're doing on day one to what they're going to be doing to day 30. So they know what they need to come in and do every day. Again, being a remote team, it's a lot harder to come into the office and you don't see anybody because you're coming into your own office by yourself. But once you sit down and you have a plan set in front of you, okay, this is what I need to do today. This is the training I need to accomplish. Not only does it make it really, really easy on the employee to come in and learn, but it also makes it a lot easier on the rest of the team. So that way you're not throwing all of the resources you have in order to get this person up and running as well. hundred percent. Yeah. It can be really hard if, if you don't think that through your team spends so much time bringing somebody up to speed and, yep. uh, and actually away from working on the end client result versus <laughs> bringing the other person up to speed. And every time that you want to hire, you need to hire because you need more throughput. But then at the same time, you're slowing down to get somebody else up to speed or multiple people up to speed. So if you're not yeah. careful, it can, be, uh, it can be very, very daunting to, to onboard and train uh, new people. So Janelle, you brought something up. Uh, You talked about one-on-ones. I think you've done at Invisible a great job with your kind of one-on-one meetings. Can you talk about what that means to you and how those meetings flow? How could somebody rip kind of your one-on-one meetings that you have uh, throughout the company and go do them for themselves? So for each of my direct reports, I have a project management board where Everything that they do lives, dies, and eats on that board. Everything is on that board. Um, (laughs) If it's not on that board, they're in trouble. (laughs) So when I have my one-on-one meetings, I go over all of the projects that they have um, outstanding or that they're working on. Um, I go over any upcoming projects that need to be accomplished. Um, I also bring in anyone else that's working in that project. So that way we're all on the same page. But 
I also focus on development and I work on, you know, these are areas of weakness. How can we improve them? And each week I go over those with, you know, on our one-on-ones and um, I highlight them, you know, oh, and I do it from a place where it's not, you know, this, this, you're weak here. Like you need to improve this kind of thing. It's more of a suggestive, like, you know, what, what do you think if, you know, you tried this, you know, how, how would that make you feel? Or do you think that would benefit you? Or do you think that that would, you know, hurt you in the long run? What are your, what are your thoughts on it? Um, and I kind of let them take it from there. And it's kind of, I like to, what I like to say is I like to plant a bunch of little seeds and then go around and water them. <laughs> no, I think if you can get anybody to think that it's their idea, right? But mm-hmm. they're going to be so much better off than if you say, go do this and you need to do this and you're not doing well with this, right? So right. I think talking about it in a constructive way, how did it go? What's your feedback? Yeah. What are your thoughts? How, how do you think that could have went differently? How do you think we could improve, right? Get somebody to think about uh, taking ownership of the issue themselves and telling you how they're going to deal with it without you having to say, this is what I want you to do. Right. And my That's secret great. time frame for um, establishing any sort of habits, I like people to try things for two weeks. Just try it for two weeks and then we can reevaluate and see how it makes you feel because it takes two weeks to establish a habit. So I, I always have a minimum of two weeks. You got to try something. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. So um, watching the clock, want to be cognizant of time, but let's talk real quick about our tech stack, so to speak, at Invisible PPC. And when I say tech stack, I mean, what are the things, what are the tools that we use all day, every day? What are the systems that we use to, to keep us sane and to help us really um, do things at the scale in which we do them every day? Okay, deep dive. <laughs> So, of course, we utilize G Suite where we have Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Drive. Um, Everything that we have is within G Suite. Um, That's one of our main platforms that we use for communication with our clients. Um, But we also have Asana, which is mainly for internal. Um, It's it's Joe's favorite thing in the whole (laughs) world. (laughs) Um, It's actually my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Everything that we do is within Asana. It it makes it really easy to keep track of things, hold people accountable. Uh, It allows you to set up deadlines. And then, you know, it's kind of like, I like to describe as glorified checklist um, because that's essentially what it is. But it really helps you keep on track and it's utilized as a resource. And one of the things I like to repetitively tell my team is I don't like Asana to ever be used as a a checker like, oh, my job is done. I don't have to do anymore. Uh, No, Asana is a resource to help you achieve the ultimate goal. Um, So the ultimate goal isn't in mind. And, and, you know, let's say uh, you check a checkbox and the goal still isn't achieved. Your job's not done. So keeping that in mind too, when you're utilizing that platform, um, because I have seen people fall into those bad habits. We also utilize Slack a lot uh, for all of our internal communication. Um, it, again, it creates that across the desk feel. So it, it's as though you're in the same office with people without being in the same office with people. There are a bunch of fun channels that we utilize <laughs> within uh, our Slack. Um, I, Joe is laughing at Zoom fails. Uh, <laughs> but we also have, you know, things that boost morale like Invisible Eats. Uh, where we post all of our pictures of our food because, you know, we love food. And then we have a dedicated channel for each of our departments. So that way it stays directly related to the topic of discussion. We have a helpline channel as well so that everyone within the company is on. So if anyone needs help with anything, they can immediately go and post that channel and they get answers because they have everyone available to them to be able to use as a resource. Um, And then trying to think we also have depending on the project we did we of course um build a channel for that project until that project is complete then we can archive the channel so that way we stay within topic we utilize dixie app um i talked earlier about having our daily stand-ups um we are a team of over 30 people so if we were to have a daily 
stand up, it would probably take a little bit of time. Uh, so we, we have reverted to utilizing Dixie app, which is really cool. It's an add-on for Slack that it cues a person at the end of, well, you can set it at a time, but it cues a person for us at the end of each day, asking them different questions. What accomplishments did you have today? Um, any hiccups, challenges, celebrations, um, ideas you'd like to share, and an open mic. So we utilize that on a daily basis and everyone is required to fill that out. So we're able to see, you know, if anyone needs help anywhere, if anyone needs, uh, has any great ideas that they want to share, which is really cool because a bunch of really good ideas have come off of that. And then we also utilize it for um, making sure that we're staying on target. So our, each of our department heads has a different sort of questionnaire that they fill out ensuring that, you know, we're hitting the sales benchmarks that we're trying to hit, that, you know, we're getting, we're collecting at the rate that we're trying to collect at, we're onboarding at the rate that we're wanting to onboard at, you know, all of those different things. Um, and we have that on a daily basis so we can keep track how far off we are to our monthly goal. We also utilize T-sheets. Um, so T-sheets is more... It's definitely more for an employee that's not like me, that has a very set day to day. This is what I come in. This is what I'm doing. This is what I know I need to work on. And it's really easy for them to keep track of how long they've spent on each project. It's a uh, timing tool so we can see exactly where our resources are going. And if, you know, an individual needs more training in a certain aspect of the company or if, um, you know, a particular client is taking longer than they should, depending on their ad spend. So we're really able to see where, where we're really, really successful and where we're really, really efficient. And then where we're not so much and we need to work a little bit. So like I said, T-Sheets is very much for a person who comes in and has like at least 15, 20 minute intervals where they're able to focus on one project at a time. So do you use T-Sheets? No. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you will want to shoot yourself in the head using T-sheets. <laughs> um, so we do, at least once a month, we do a time study for two weeks to make sure that we're using our time efficiently. And I tried to do my time study in T-sheets. Failed. I tried to do my time study just by hand, just, you know, writing it on the side of my failed, awful, couldn't do it. Um, I was finding I was spending way more time writing things down than I was able to focus on what I wanted to focus on. So there is this handy little tool called Toggle and it's T-O-G-G-L, no E at the end. And I love the tool because it is the one tool I have found that is able to keep up with me. <laughs> If you look at my time study, you'll see I'll spend like 10 seconds here, 30 seconds here, two minutes here. And I just kind of bounce around depending on um, where I'm needed most or, you know, my train of thought if I'm spark an idea. Um, so I use Toggle and I'm able to do time studies based off of Toggle. So that's probably one of my favorite tools. And then I'm trying to think what else we use off the top of my head that on a day to day basis that, oh, Ninja Cat for our reporting. <laughs> To the love hate relationship. Love, <laughs> hate. <laughs> it's very split down the middle because I love the insight that we get off of our reporting from Ninja Cat and our Ninja Cat reporting, and I'm sure many of you use it. Um, it's to keep track of where our accounts are, if they're you know meeting goals or not meeting goal. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes it has really great days where, you know, it works exactly the way I wanted to work. It gives me the info I want. And, then, you know, some days I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I just want to bang my head against the wall. This is taking so long. <laughs> yeah, that will happen. I think the only thing we didn't mention is like, you know, we use like Unbounce or landing pages. Um, but that's kind of a specific tool that's not necessarily a, um, a top level management tool. Uh, or cadence tool, so to speak, more right. just a deliverable tool. Um, but I think that's really it for like the main tech stack. Um, but even if we say um, that tool included, that's really about all of the software throughout the whole company. If we talk about, if we throw Unbounce in there too, right? I don't think we're we're really missing almost anything. No, nope. those, are, those are all of them. Okay, perfect. So I want to wrap it up here. This has been awesome. Um, Janelle, what do you think we missed? What do you think uh, we missed in today's conversation? Any questions come to mind or topics that you think maybe we should have talked about? 
Uh, I just want to drive home the point of communication, how that's extremely important throughout the team, making sure that everyone is on the same page and has an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. Because without that, if you're all steering the boat in a different direction, you're not going to go anywhere. So making sure that you're all rowing at the same time, in the same rhythm, on the same page, know exactly where you're going. I think that is the most important key to success. Definitely. I, I can say that you definitely do a great job of that. I think that any real integrator, I think, will help with the communication. Um, if you got a visionary like me, or uh, even worse, if you got two visionaries in one company like Rob and I, um, it, it can be really hard to share that vision and to slow down um, and to, to paint that big picture, but it's so necessary. And I think one of the big things that we've done is is really slow down to speed up and make sure that the team understands why we're doing the things that we're doing and how everything kind of interconnects. Um, and I think that um, that will obviously help your, your COO big time be able to communicate then that message effectively um, mm-hmm. because they, uh, you know, everybody on the team understands the bigger picture. And not only that, they have the buy-in to the bigger picture too, because they feel that they're a part of it, that they're contributing to the bottom line and they're moving that needle. They're helping move that needle. So having that buy-in and, you know, that communication to get that buy-in, I think that that's great. No, I think that's, that's a great point. I think the other thing I'd be remiss to say is like um, people missing a deadline never understood what comes next in the process or what the bigger project really looked like. And so being late was just like, I'm late. Like there was no uh, ramifications for being re- late. But when they see the big picture and this is where we're going and we're all as a company, 30 plus people moving towards this as the goal, it's like, crap, if I'm late, that stops Brittany from this. And then that hangs up Heather on this. And then Janelle's going to be mad because the project's off track. Like it's like, you know, it's the 10 car pileup and they can see how that really affects uh, the project in a much bigger picture. And I know in the past, it wasn't very easy to spot that. So it's like, yeah, I'm a day late, no problem, you know, and we've been able to turn that around a lot, I feel like, by people really understanding the bigger picture. And and it helps too when we've been utilizing funnel maps a lot to be able to get that bigger picture and break it down visually. Um, And because a lot of people are visual learners and they do get get information from a visual aspect. So having that visual there and saying, you know, this is this is what we're go this is where we're going. These are the steps to get there. And this is everything we need within each and have that just big picture where we're able to share it is also extremely important. Perfect. This has been awesome. So Janelle wrapping it up, one last question. So at the end of every podcast, I always recommend or I always ask my podcast guests for a book recommendation. And so for me, I'm a voracious reader. I love reading, but um, I've made it okay with myself to, to, uh, to stop reading books. And what I mean is I'm either going to pick up the book and I'm going to read it in like a couple of days, or I'm going to read the first chapter and I've now made it okay to just stop reading it because I will find that then I don't read. Like it'll take me a month to read something if I don't like it. And I used to like have the... The, the thought process, like I got to finish every book that I start. No, I don't. I don't have to. And I let myself get off the hook with that one. Um, but now that I found uh, that I'm okay with that, um, I, I really take books more seriously, right? And I love reading them actually a lot more because I know if I'm not okay with it, I'm just going to toss it. So with each guest, I love having them on because I want to pick their brain for my audience and for myself, right? So I'm curious with your point of view, what's what's a really good book that has changed the way that that you run Invisible to PPC, that you run your life the way that uh, you do? So Rob is going to laugh when he hears this. Um, never lose a customer again. <laughs> oh, all right. So, so he has been uh, talking to me about this book for a while. I finally have picked it up and I've been reading it and one, it's a great, re- it's re- extremely well written and easy to follow. Um, it's it's not boring. It doesn't have any of that boring jargon that, you know, a lot of books have. Um, but I love it because it's all based on the human experience mm. and following a person through their journey as they're purchasing goods or as, you know, they're, and 
just even the different chemical connections that happen while they're going through the human experience really gives you a much deeper understanding as to where a buyer is in their journey and how to essentially essentially maximize that experience so they're getting the best experience possible. Um, I've been utilizing a lot of that when it comes to looking at our client journey. And not only that, it helps with retention too, because you can't grow if you're bleeding. (laughs) Um, Never lose a customer again is one that I would recommend to everyone. It's a great read. Um, I've loved it so far. Perfect. So that's actually sitting in audible. That'll probably have to be the next one I read. So thank you so much for that recommendation, Janelle. And thanks for coming on the show. I really hope that everybody got a really good understanding of what it means to work with an integrator, what it means to bring on a COO, what are some of the hangups, what are some of the gotchas, what are some of the best practices, um, and they have a little bit of a clear guide on, on how to go implement this for themselves. So thanks so much, Janelle, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Show Me Your Nuggets. I mean, show me the nuggets. Yo Troy signing out. Thanks for tuning in to Show Me The Nuggets. If you've been enjoying the podcast and find our content helpful, please visit our Apple Podcast page, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a review. Joe and the whole team have been working hard to bring more value to the show. Your feedback will go a long way in helping us make the show better and reach a wider audience.